Hey, hey, what's going on, folks? We are about to go live. Just give me one second here. I want to make sure I get myself all, live. all mic'd up so you can hear me correctly. All right. What's going on out there to everybody? Hope you're having a good time. We about to have a good time. We about to get into it. This is going to be This is going to be good this evening. It's going to be good this evening. Uh, get your popcorn. <laughs> oh, we're going to have ourselves a good time. Hey, what's going on, Ali? Hey, folks. Give me one second here. We're going to hop into it. Hey, if you're just joining us, go ahead and hit the chat room. And uh, let us know where you're calling in from, where you are, where you represent, where you represent. Because, uh, <laughs> We got one that ooh, we're going we're gonna to step on some folks' toes. <laughs> Let's just say this is we, this time. Mm. Hey, for those folks who don't know, my name is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B. And for the last 20 years, I've been a men's performance coach with African Fly, the liquid aphrodisiac. And uh, yeah, I've talked with a whole bunch of people um, and did a whole bunch of research. And, you know, I know a lot about erectile dysfunction. I'd like to spread this news out to everybody so you can have that healthy life that you're looking for. But, you know, things happen. Uh, things happen to, if you live long enough, things are going to happen to you in ways that you don't want it to. <laughs> and what we're going to do is talk about how to make sure you don't have that become a real problem in your life. Um, and once again, like I said, for those folks who are joining, go ahead and put in the chat room where you're coming in, where you're calling in from. Florida in the house, Louisiana in the house. What's going on with you, Mr. Mason? Uh, here we talk about sexual health issues for men. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, our basic process is just like this. Every Thursday, 9 p.m., we get into it, uh, release a video at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday. And we go in the evening times, we get into it, we talk about it. <laughs> we give you that information that you need. Hey, what's going on with you, Scott Victor? What's going on, Mr. Williams, Arlington, Texas, in the house. Good to see every one of you. Sam Patrick, CMOS. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to talk about CMOS. We're actually looking to partner with a guy. He has some of the best CMOS I've had. It's, it's actually phenomenal. Great for workouts and more. Uh, so we will be talking about that. What's going on with you, Mario? Uh, Houston, Texas is in the house. Love it. Um, as always, shout out to my team, the people who make this all possible for me to to get in here and give you guys some of that information. Always got to shout them out. What's going on with you, Dale? Alabama in the house. Wichita. Wichita. All right. Cool. So, um, yeah, this information is important, especially nowadays. You know, we're talking about that damn thing that's going around the whole planet. And um yeah, if you have a relationship, you want to keep that relationship. Part of that is, you know, the sexual side of it. You know, let's let's be blunt. We grown. We grown. <laughs> so uh, we want to get healthy now and we want to keep those relationships strong. So that's what we're going to be talking about, because, you know, this spring and summer is going to be cuffing season. People are going to look to get together and stay together <laughs> because you don't have time to be out and hanging out like you used to. All right. Phoenix in the house. Zambia. Africa. Hey, what's going on with you, Ali? All right. All right. Allen Houston. Uh, Austin, I'm sorry. All right. Love it. Peterson, West Virginia in the house. So uh, let's go ahead and get into, into it because tonight we're talking about erectile dysfunction and how to work with that in relationships. And for my guys who are like, you know what, uh, Uncle B, I don't have that particular problem, whether that problem with the relationship or that problem with erectile dysfunction, just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> just you wait. Oh man, I, I know. I was young before too, and it's like, oh man, I'm never gonna have a problem until I had a problem. <laughs> then it was like, uh oh, what do you do? That's what we're gonna talk about. How, uh, what you're going to need to do uh, to get that erectile dysfunction in check. Um, and today we're gonna talk about uh, just just the things that go around it. Which foods uh, destroy your sexual uh, performance by either directly or indirectly, and also, uh, how your lady can help and not hurt the situation. This is very important because a lot of times we get into situations where uh, we're looking for, you know, we go as a man, we're like, oh, I, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, I, I just want to take care of it as quickly as possible. And then if you don't do it correctly, you're going to run into some other problems. So, uh, alrighty, we got the questions coming in, EJ. Uh huh. 
Is it possible to never get erectile dysfunction? Yeah, 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 yeah. You do. Ha you have to be on point, though. Uh, and that is actually the way it's normally supposed to be. We're supposed to live without this particular issue. We're just living that Western lifestyle, sitting down, eating some pizza, and some chicken and fries, and, and drinking a beer. And, I mean, that's normal. It's Wednesday, <laughs> so uh, that uh, that can lead to issues with ED. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So the first thing is. Um, ED is common. It's, it happens. <laughs> it does happen because, you know, as always, I talk about uh, men, we give life. Women give birth, men give life. And, you know, if you're not living well, then the world is set up for you not to give life. And part of giving life is having an erection. <laughs> so uh, if you're if you're living that Western lifestyle, then you're going to run into problems. Our ancestors, I when I say ancestors, I mean father, grandfather, great grandfather, all of them had higher levels of testosterone because of their lifestyle. We have to change our lifestyle. So EJ, really, it comes down to the lifestyle that we're living right now. Uh huh. <laughs> forbidden foods. I'm not sure if there's some forbidden foods, uh, <laughs> Ali. But uh, yeah. So when we get into that, first of all, you know, there's that level of embarrassment. It's like, when, especially when you're like, you know, you're trying to perform and then it doesn't work. That's the you're on that downward cycle of like, you don't just show up with an ED. It's usually weak erections, then weaker, then weaker, then weaker, then erectile dysfunction. So uh, we want to catch it as soon as possible, just knowing the signs of it. Uh, huh? Hey, Victor. Uh, yeah, yeah, diabetes, that can, that can do that. Uh, uh huh. Yep, great questions. I'm going to go through this so I can get to all those questions. So uh, in a relationship, you can feel depressed, angry, upset, uh, less masculine, socially isolated uh, and in denial. You'd be like, oh, my God, I swear that has never happened to me since the last time it happened to me. Um, and and one of the craziest things is the desire to avoid your spouse. Um, and so the other factors in, in uh, and why you may be experiencing ED. Why does this happen? Mental health conditions such as stress, anxiety, depression, uh, of course, medications, uh, definitely hop into the medications because that's really important. Cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney, liver disease, diabetes, uh, as my man just mentioned, high blood pressure, low testosterone levels, use of alcohol, tobacco, or other drugs. So some of this stuff you may know. <laughs> if not, I hope that filled you in. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, see, Brian T has a question about uh, delivery today. Hey, uh, if you have a African fly question, uh, go ahead and send that email to help at uh, African. I'm sorry, help at airsnaturals.com. Uh, that way we can handle any African fly questions. For those who don't know, uh, I am the sexual performance coach with African fly, which is a liquid aphrodisiac. You want to check out AfricanFly.com when you get a chance. All right. Um, and of course, as I'm talking about erectile dysfunction, I'm also talking about weak erections because you want to have this before you get to erectile dysfunction. You want to uh, be sure. So when we talk about relationships, this is hugely important. If you're having sex, Typically, is a relationship that goes along with it. And if something comes up, you need to be able to work it out. So um, ED can make your lady feel confused, anxious, undesirable or number one and most deadly suspicious. What are you doing? Why can't he get it up for me? It, mm, yeah. And, and it's funny because I've experienced this from the opposite end. I actually uh, was with a young lady who everything seemed to be right, but she for particular reasons just didn't like having sex and it's like I was confused <laughs> I was suspicious I was anxious so I understand that that whole feeling so you don't want to put your significant other through that um and it can be hard to talk about you know some guys we got that stigma about it. it's like uh, uh well you know it's not like we get around the fellas like you know what last night man I just couldn't get it up I haven't had too many conversations like that. Well, actually, no, let me correct it. I've had a lot of conversations like that, but that isn't normal. That's uh, it's, I'm a performance coach. So these are clients I'm talking to. Um, and the thing to remember is your lady has an important role in this um, because it's about your quality of life, your quality of your sex life and managing erectile dysfunction. So you want to include her in those conversations with, you know, if you're going to the doctor, there's a diagnosis. If there's education, like if watching videos, like you're going to watch this video, show this to her. Uh, even going to counseling and therapy, if you need her to be there, let her be there. It's important that you're both in to get this taken care of. Um, 
In many, many cases, ED is treatable. Uh, lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes are by far the number one thing. The number two thing is the doctors with their pills. Uh, so you want to change the lifestyle, not just get stuck on pills. Uh huh. Tons of questions coming in. Good. Got your African flag today. Today, love it. Um, dealing it with with it together. Dealing with ED together is more effective. 94% of men felt that their partner support was important uh, when dealing with ED. So the, the steps that you can take to make sure that you don't end up on the bad side of things with ED as a couple is to have that open communications, be in counseling. Um, and there's other forms of intimacy. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, but those lifestyle changes. That's the most important part, because if you have someone in your household who's concerned about your health, but they're not supporting it in terms of like, well, you need to stop eating certain foods. You need to go to sleep on time. You need to be less stressed. And they're not sure how to help you. You, you both have to be in concert together to make sure that works. Um, so you want to have that open communications and um, communications that, that can clear up a lot of misunderstandings, especially that whole thing of her being suspicious. <laughs> you just want to let her know it's not you. Um, so the communications, um, it, it, it lets it, it opens things up. It just makes it easier to deal with. Um, you know, you have a person that's more willing to work with you if they understand what's going on. Right. You got it. Uh, really quick, fellas, uh, if you could go ahead and hit that like button. Um, you know, that really helps the, 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 the algorithm it helps us get more guys this information, which is really important. For some reason, we don't talk about men's sexual health. We talk about women's sexual health all the time. Yay for them, but we need to get this taken care of. So let's get back into it. Counseling. Um, emotional distress is common in ED for some obvious reasons. Um, so you have the individual counseling. So you had that space, that one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, you know, I sort of do counseling is more coaching, but you know, just in terms of being able to have the person open up um, and couples counseling is also very important. 50 to 70% of couples who go through it, uh, the men find it uh, a lot more effective. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and say that. Rest in power, Cicely Tyson. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Hey, what's going on, Damon? What's going on, Damon? We were just talking about Cicely just a couple of seconds ago before we hopped on air. Sorry. Uh, prayers go out to her family. Um, yeah. And also part of that couples counseling that can help you with that. That communications. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ali, yeah, suspicious. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, they looking at you sideways. You can't get it up from me. Ugh. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about that part of it. Other forms of intimacy. Um, you want to make sure you maintain while you're going through the process of figuring it out, making those lifestyle changes. Sometimes it takes time. You want to make sure that you're maintaining a level of intimacy where it may not be penetration, but, you know, holding hands, hugging, cuddling, uh, oral sex. Those things count. <laughs> OK, you don't want to lose that bond. Uh, and just one thing about um uh, Sex, which is, you know, we don't talk about this a lot, but in a, I don't say metaphysical sense, but you're, it's the only time you take two humans and they literally combine. And, you know, and if you combine in a certain way, you know, child comes out. But, you know, that, that, that intimacy, that level of being, literally being in someone, you don't want that to be, to start, uh, coming apart. So the kissing, the cuddling, the hand holding, all, hand holding, all of that plays a part. And once again, those lifestyle changes, fellas, please don't get trapped into the pill. Uh, I don't even care if you're just taking African flies. Not one thing is several things. Your body is very complicated. It's not like, oh, I'm going to take one thing and drink my beer and I'm going to be straight. Nope. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So the lifestyle changes. Uh, stop smoking. If you're a smoker, obvious. And I mean, all of it, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Smokey. Um, you want to cut out the alcohol, uh, increase the exercise. I mean, that's sort of obvious. These are obvious things. Maintain a, a moderate body weight. And uh, yeah, you got to cut out the weed. Um, and also, speaking of, well, now legal drugs, pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. You definitely want to get off the pharmaceuticals. Hey, Jarius, what's going on with your buddy? What's going on, Corey? Mills. TV in the house, Ian. 
How can I get African Fly? Go to AfricanFly.com. You can place your order online there. Okay, uh, so getting off the pharmaceuticals, uh, check to see if they are the cause. You will have to, if you're taking pharmaceuticals, the average person in the United States has seven different illnesses and it's probably increasing now. Um, and if you're taking pills, your erectile dysfunction could be caused by the pills that you're taking. It's, it's there. So hop online and look at that really long, complicated word that they gave you on the side of the bottle. Put that in into the Internet and just, you know, check on whether or not that's going to cause you uh, to have issues. Uh, so here's the thing about drugs. Drugs do one thing. <laughs> they do one thing and they fuck up everything else. And, you know, we see that even with drugs that are supposed to help, like Viagra, it cuts off a chemical that lets the blood flow back out of your penis, which allows the penis to go flaccid, no longer an erection. The problem is it does one thing and it fucks up everything else. That's the reason why people talk about problems with their eyes, their vision, um, heart palpitations, other things. So you want to be very careful uh, with that. Uh, so, you know, you have these all these completely made up drug sounding names and saying, oh, yeah, just keep taking this. And people hopping through lily fields and all this other kind of stuff. That's not real. That Come on, man. You know, you know, that doesn't make any sense. So um, now this is for the ladies. Um, you know, let her know. So these are a couple of things that the ladies should know. Pulling back may not be helpful. Um, and actually trying harder isn't the answer either because sometimes people, women, uh, assume that it's, it's them. It is something that they need to do. You now it's a physical issue. It's a lifestyle issue that needs to be changed. So, you know, if she's going to wearing Victoria's Secrets or being overly aggressive, that's not helpful <laughs> because it's not the stimulation. It's the physical side of things. The, the life giver is no longer able to give life. You have to resuscitate the life giver. Mm. Mouth to mouth resuscitation for the life giver. Yay. Um, but, um, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that, that you're not turned on, but it's the, the ED, ED uh, makes things just not work. So uh, for the ladies, it's not your problem and you're not the cause. Don't feel rejected. Don't personalize it. It's not about you. Hey, what's going on, Karan? Um, it's not about you. Um, and oh, for the love of God, as I said before, discuss things outside of the bedroom. You don't want to, you know, while things are not working correctly, the guys are, you know, you're already under stress and just going to sit there and just come on. Why don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait till afterwards. Uh, and of course, you can experiment with sex, learn different things. You know, you can have, still have fun. Um, and, and fellas, the main thing you want to make sure is that you don't allow this issue become um, a depression. Uh, you can overcome this. This is not something to be embarrassed about. It's something to realize you need to empower yourself with the right information so that, boom, you can get up. You can, you can work correctly. Um, I've talked to many a guy who were on the way down or were dealing with uh, straight up ED and they overcame it. And it's never one thing. It's always a question. Uh, in fact, I'll give you uh, an example in a little bit, but I do want to get to your questions. Keep putting them in the chat room. I'm glad to see everybody is there. <laughs> Black Morpheus. <laughs> My man, COVID-19 virus can mess with your sex life and big time. Woo, man. Uh, I live in PG County right outside of Washington, D.C. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> They're just now opening the restaurants up to 25% capacity. So there was like, you know, all the restaurants were closed, no dating. So, um, but yeah, let me go ahead and hit this up right quick for those guys who are just coming in. Once again, my name is Brian, AKA Uncle B. And for the last 20 years, I've been a men's performance coach, 21 years, the men's performance coach with African Fly, the liquid aphrodisiac. Uh, Obviously, thank you for being on. If you could, please hit that like button so we can make sure as many guys get this information as possible. Um, you can check out African Fly at uh, AfricanFly.com. And, you know, we have a discount code of AF15 for all my guys on here. Goldberg, what up with you, nephew? Uh, what's going on, Fred? Um, and also for the guys who are uh, looking at for on Amazon, we're working with Amazon. Amazon, we sold out. And then <laughs> issues just came and, you know, we're, we're trying to get on Amazon, but Amazon is a beast. Uh, it's like trying to, you know, 
having a whispering contest with Godzilla. You're just going to lose. <laughs> um, so there's nothing to that. So, all right. I want to get into these questions. I um, want to get into these questions. All right. Just order some African fly. Still waiting. Okay. Uh, it should be going there. Once again, if you checked out African fly, uh, please email help at airsnaturals.com so we can get all your information and make sure you get the tracking information for you. So uh, once again, shout out to everybody who's uh, joined us here. Go ahead and let me know where you're from in the chat room. And let me go ahead and hop into uh, some of these questions right quick. Um, all right. <laughs> Mm hmm. Huh. OK, that's it. We got some good ones here. All right. So let me go ahead and uh, holler uh, Victor right quick. Uh, it sounds like diabetic. It's a killer, but I've been better lately. You've been taking vitamins. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One of the things you want to be very uh clear about is that you can overcome diabetes. Uh, check out Dr. Jason Fung. Um, there's therapeutic uh therapeutic fasting which basically means that you can clear off the gunk <laughs> the meats saturated meat that's all throughout your body so that your the, the blood will be able to go through uh the veins correctly out into the veins you don't have issues uh we did a video uh talking about that so please check that out but yeah yeah you can't overcome that cool thank you very much uh what stops blockage in your blood flow? Uh, that could be several different things. Great question, Meals TV. Uh, okay. Hmm. So the main one uh, being uh, saturated fats, animal fats. Uh, that's what most people are, are dealing with right now. And literally that's because we're doing something that's never happened in the history of humankind, which is being able to eat meat at every meal. That is never, ever, ever happened we're the first ones uh back in the day when um they were called diseases of the rich diabetes hypertension heart attacks all of those were diseases of the rich because only the rich could afford meat and you know they they consumed it but not at the level not even at the level that we consume it now but they still got sick because that's what happens um you're you're consuming death. So that's the first blockage. So it, what happened is this is your uh, your veins, your arteries. It'll start getting coated with that uh, fat. And so even with diabetes, as blood is going through, it can't go through uh, the veins. It can't get through and feed your body the way it should be. And that's the way with diabetes, you still have a bunch of sugar that's running through your veins, causing havoc. All right. Um, so that's the first block. The second block is just your blood is sticky. Uh, and when it's sticky, that's because you're eating stuff, you know, you're not getting enough uh, 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 fluid into your body. I mean, literally, <laughs> your body's made of, uh, of mainly water. And so you need to have water there. So you want water based uh, foods. What are water based foods? Fruits and vegetables. That simple. So um, and also doing deep breathing, belly breathing that allows for uh, your blood to take in more oxygen. So we breathe very shallow. We breathe from the, from the chest. Uh, and so when we breathe from the belly like a baby, the belly goes up and down as you breathe. That's getting more blood. Uh, that's getting more oxygen into your bloodstream. Your blood platelets don't stick together. OK, hope that helped out. Saw a question pop up. I want to get to that right quick. Uh huh. Ah, uh, you asked about that earlier. <laughs> what is your opinion on VIP Royal Honey Packs? From these gas stations first of all it's from a gas station uh, <laughs> the only thing that's good that comes out of a gas station is gas <laughs> everything else is packaged uh and probably at the lower end of the scale so uh and when it comes to honey depends on what you're doing if you're just using it for a sweetener and you don't have a problem with weight then that's fine um for a lot of people tend to believe erroneously that certain sweeteners are better than others uh, your body doesn't care. It's just turning it straight into it's just sugar to your body. And what is sugar to your body? It's like putting rocket fuel into a regular car. It just I mean, just give sugar to a kid and see how they start running around like that. Well, as you become an adult, you're consuming that sugar. You, you're not running around, but it's going through your body, just wreaking havoc. So um, if you're going to, you know, people think like honey is better or like brown sugar. I heard that growing up. Brown sugar is healthier for you. Brown sugar is sugar mixed with molasses. 
that's not healthier. <laughs> it's probably worse. Um, and the same thing applies for, uh, you know, someone asked about sweeteners such as uh, uh, not stevia, but equal and those things. Those are not good either. Uh, I'd rather you go with something natural, but you have to be very careful. Be very careful. So, yeah, uh, royal honey. If you want some honey, go ahead and get the quality. I mean, and this is something I just want to say also, uh, we're going to be talking about foods and I'll show you guys uh, my diet, my meal and everything like that. But, you know, I came to the realization that I'd rather spend as much money as possible on the food, higher quality food than some of the other stuff, because, yeah, you can spend money on some things and just end up not being healthy. You know, it's like, oh, my car is fat, man. You know what I'm saying? Get the car, got the rims, blah, blah, blah. Spend all this money on your car and you can't get out of it <laughs> without pain. That's, that ain't gangster. <laughs> That's not even smart. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, Corey asked the question, what's a family? Is African fly natural? Can I take it every day? I know if you take Viagra, et cetera, it has side effects in the long run. Uh, I have taken African fly more than anybody on the planet. And the other person's taking more. <laughs> the second most is right here behind the camera. And we're both alive, both healthy. Uh, I've been taking it for the past 24, 25 years. Um, yeah. And, you know, daily. And really, it's uh, to me, I call it a, a testosterone salad. It's just different herbs that are mixed together. So it's eight herbs strained through alcohol. Um, uh, uh, we use a process that takes about two weeks for it to cure. Um, and once it gets into your body, it's helpful. So it's like eating a salad. You're never going to get to a point where you're eating too much salad. Um, same thing in terms of, uh, uh, you know, overdosing on it. I tried it. I was like, OK, let me just drink as much as possible. And it's the same as anything else. Your body just pisses it's like orange juice. Your body will piss out what it doesn't need. Uh, so I just wasted a bottle, basically. <laughs> so, uh, yep. So uh, in the long run, what are the effects of African fly as compared to Viagra? Well, I'm not sure about Viagra. I would never do that. But as far as African fly, I'm healthy. Uh, about to turn 50. I'm good with it. I, I love getting old. I hate aging. <laughs> so uh, getting old is the number of times you go around the planet. Aging is how you take care of yourself. Uh, Ian, how can I get African fly? Go to AfricanFly.com. All right. Mm, Lorenzo Mason, my doctor had me on so much medication, my manhood drew up. Yeah, that's very possible. Uh, guys, once again, be very careful with doctors. They are great at diagnosing, but they rarely take classes in food, which makes no sense. That's like saying uh, you're the pit crew chief for NASCAR and you don't know what kind of fuel goes in the car. You're like, yeah, let's stick some water in there, see what happens. <laughs> let's, 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 okay, the water didn't work out well. Well, uh, <laughs> let, we're just pissing it. Let's see, what, <laughs> piss on the spark plug, see if that'll work. I mean, it's it's not it's it's not a good idea to go to people who do not understand your body fully, and it's not because they're not smart. It's not because uh, they don't care. It's because that's the way the system has set them up. It's not cool at all. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's get to some more questions here. Mm. People will have to put in work doing more of their own food prep. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh-huh. All right. AT, what up? Um, been on the African fly and beet juice combo. First beverage in the morning. Whoo, bruh. You're going to get it. Hey, throw in some workouts with that. You're going to be over the top. You're going to be over the top. All right. All right. Uh, Adam, Sheedy, best food to eat for ED. Um... There is no such thing as a best food to eat for ED. <laughs> and, there, and I'm saying that there are some better foods, obviously. Um, fruits and vegetables are going to be at the top of that. Um, in terms of ED, you want to increase your testosterone, you want to increase your blood flow. Uh, so foods that can do that are fruits and vegetables. <laughs> uh, you want to avoid the dead food. We are used to eating survival food. All the food in the, in the grocery store outside of that first lane, they're all food that's been packaged. Um, and we learned how to package foods during World War One and Two. And so after World War Two, everybody came back. We had, we had these manufacturing plants and it was like uh, instead of putting in some really nasty food that they were eating overseas, it was like, well, we'll just add some more flavor to it and call it Doritos. 
or something like that. And so we're eating stuff that can sit on a shelf. The reason why it's it's made that way is because it sits on a shelf. It doesn't have anything to do with your health. So the more fruits and vegetables you're eating, the better. Um, and all plants do more than one thing. So earlier I spoke about pharmaceutical products doing one thing. They designed to do one thing and fuck up everything else. Well, plants, for the vast majority of the things that we can eat, the 250,000 edible plants on this planet, we consume it. It does more than one thing. It helps out in terms of blood flow. It helps some help with your eyes, some help with your skin, some help with your hair, some help with your uh, your erections. So, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're getting as much of that into your system as possible. Um, so, yep. Yep. I hope that answered your question. Uh, there isn't just one thing you is. And, I, and to think of it this way, because when people ask that question, I can only give you what's available to me. And though I'm across the street from a grocery store, uh, what's available to me is limited to what that grocery store puts in there. But if you go to the other side of the planet, then there are fruits and vegetables that you've never seen. And people walking around eating those fruits and vegetables and they... There's people there, so obviously erections must work. <laughs> people are having babies, so uh, the same thing applies to every part of the planet. As long as you get your uh, fruits and vegetables in, it is helpful. Okay. Mhm. Mm yeah, Black Morpheus. Uh huh. Nutrient plant-based diet: no meat, no dairy, no fish. Period. Absolutely, sir. Good call, cousin Wood. <laughs> Texas in the house. All right. Uh, what important exercise do you recommend for someone like me who just started to go to the gym? Um, I would say just keep going. Uh, when it comes to the gym, I had a, my nephew, my real nephew, <laughs> asked me what's up um, because I was working out with him and we were working out like consistently. And he said, well, how long do we have to work out? And I thought about it for a second and I was like, uh, for the rest of your life. I mean, there is no like slowing down. It's like, oh, I'm going to hit 50 and then, or I'm hit 60 and then, or I'm hit. No, you can work out for the rest of your life. It's been proven over and over again. I mentioned last week, a uh, gentleman, I said he was 95. He's actually 99. He works out every day, lifts weights every day. You know, they're like uh, trying to figure out whether they should slow him down. It's like, no. Unless something's wrong, you shouldn't slow down. <laughs> There's no reason to slow down. So uh, you're going to learn stuff. Um, you know, doing high intensity interval training. That's what I do. That's great. Um, as soon as the weather breaks, I'm going to get into sprinting. Sprinting is, is, a, is a great way to uh, 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 build muscle. Okay. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened. We got frozen there for a second. But we're back in the house. We're back in the house. Uh-huh. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and make sure we get everybody with that. Uh, uh, Fred, does African fly help with HB? I'm not sure. What is HB? Uh, HP. Um, <laughs> um, not sure what that abbreviation is, sir. Uh, so just go ahead and put that in there. I'll make sure to get to you. Uh, does a high testosterone level help cure or get rid of ED? And what foods would you recommend for high levels of testosterone? Uh, yes, high level of testosterone does help cure. And actually, I want to uh, I'm always be careful when I say the word cure. It won't cure. It will, it will heal you. Uh, cure means that it won't come back. Um, if you go back to the, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I ate all good foods. And so these foods help me overcome my erection issues. And then you go back to the bad foods, then you're going to have erection issues. That's simple. So when we're talking about um, uh, uh, what foods to eat, as I mentioned before, just get your fruits and vegetables in there. I mean, such things like watermelon um, has it has L-citrulline uh, and the L-citrulline, uh, once it gets into your body, will turn into L-arginine, and L-arginine will help with nitric oxide. And you will notice, <laughs> you go to the, to the stores, and they got L-citrulline, L-arginine, and nitric oxide in pill form. Just eat the watermelon, seeded watermelon, and uh, you're good to go. Uh-huh. Uh, Mr. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can say your name, so I'm not going to try. I just appreciate you, sir. Is it true that drinking protein shakes can have an effect on you? Absolutely. Um, I am very much not a proponent of protein shakes for a couple of reasons. The first one is, uh, as humans, you, we do not need that much protein. 
We just don't. Um, all protein comes from fruits and vegetables. All proteins come from plants. So the only way that something can make protein on this planet is the sun comes down, photosynthesis with the plants, protein is developed. That's how they grow. So uh, every animal that we eat, eats plants. We don't eat carnivores because that's two steps away. The carnivore will actually cause problems with us eating it. So, um, yeah, you want to you want to be very careful about which which foods you're eating and why. But, you know, the plants is really simple. It's really simple. And so when it comes down to those protein shakes, the only reason why you're eating that protein shakes because it tastes good. I mean, I was at the gym the other day and I had to laugh. I'm sitting there looking at. What's on? They literally have a protein bar with a picture of a cake on it. <laughs> the other one what was cookies. The other one was ice cream. What does that have to do with working out? No, it's just sugar. All they're doing is just getting you hooked on sugar and then saying something weird like protein. Um, no, you don't need that. You don't need protein in that form. It's actually doing more harm than good. Uh, I experimented with that and gained weight. I hated them people for that. Uh, all right. Antonio, my man. <laughs> Woo, what a question. Does too much sex cause ED? Hmm. Let's see. Um, no, <laughs> no. Uh, does too much sex cause ED? No. Um, it's actually, if you're having sex, that means that things are working. Uh, having too much sex. If you ejaculate too often, if you're uh, uh, masturbating too often, that can lead to some issues. Uh, if you're having too much sex, I mean, there's a refractory period. Uh, we'll be talking about that next week. Uh, you know, you have uh, an erection, you uh, ejaculate, you have an orgasm, and then there's a period of time that things aren't working until it gets back up. Uh, there's a whole science behind that uh, that I'll break down, but uh, no, nah. if you're having sex and you're enjoying the sex, no, oh, it's not going to lead to ED. Nope. Mm -mm. Uh, can high cholesterol affect your erections? Uh, absolutely. Uh, and you know, so cholesterol is all throughout your entire body. It's needed for your body to work correctly. Um, when they're talking about good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, the good cholesterol is the cholesterol your body makes. The bad cholesterol is the, the cholesterol you get from eating dead animals. So uh, if you're consent, once again, men, we give life and in order to give life, this our member has to move. And if you're eating death, then no. <laughs> uh, can you eat, live off of animals for a very long time? I've done it. Absolutely. But at some point you're going to run into uh, problems. No joke. Oh, no joke. OK. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Black Morpheus. My man. You're all over this. Uh, you can't get protein from plants, not dairy or meat. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh, sprinting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying that um, for uh, Alan Austin. Uh, yeah, for sprinting. Sprinting is uh, a great exercise. I, I was working out with a gentleman who was a senior track meet uh, champion of the U.S. I mean, the guy was just fit and he just ran um, and he ran fast. I think he was like in his 50s when the, when I was training with him. But uh, the thing that I did notice that was that I started slimming down and getting uh, cut up. If you look at most sprinters, they look cut up, uh, not necessarily jacked, but they're cut up because that level of intensity uh, burns and it does have that epoch effect of you're going to continue to burn, uh, not burn calories because no mind, I'm not going to get into the calorie things, but your metabolism will increase. Uh, so your metabolism will be higher. That means you're uh, able to uh, breathe out more CO2, breathe out more waste, and you will lose weight uh, faster. Uh, huh. uh, where can I get more information on intermittent fasting? Uh, YouTube. Um, actually, I have a couple of videos where I've talked about intermittent fasting. Uh, so, but when it comes down to it for the intermittent fasting, you know, 16 hours of not eating, eight hour window of eating. Uh, yeah, that's very powerful. You will increase your testosterone levels, your HGH. Um, it's good. It's good. So, yeah, you do want to do that. Uh, I do that like I do that today. I, I do that pretty often. Uh, 
Fred, does African Fly help with high blood pressure? It's not designed to help specifically with high blood pressure, but it does help from the standpoint of that it helps expand the, uh, the blood vessels so more blood can go through. So, uh, yeah. Yep. You're welcome, Alan. You're welcome. Uh, Dave, does African Fly raise blood pressure? No, no, it doesn't raise blood pressure. Um, in fact, once again, because it's increasing the size of the, your veins, more blood is able to go through correctly without issues. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right, going back because I know I'm, I've been missing some. Uh huh. Ah, okay. Karan, on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your testosterone and erections, knowing that? You have been on African Fly for 25 years. Wonderful question. You good, man. Another Mr. Samuels. Okay. Um, so for those guys that don't know, the scale of one to 10, 10 being everything works, one being um, things barely work or don't work at all. Most guys between the five and seven. So uh, I've been taking African Fly for such a long time when I was younger, really didn't need it. So I'm sitting there at a nine or a 10, just depending on what I was doing. And, you know, you take African fly, I was hitting like 11 or 12. I mean, it was, it was just that much energy, but it's not just taking African fly as I learned, as I got older, because as I got older, especially uh, late into my thirties, things started changing. You know, I started going down that scale. So, you know, I think just taking African fly kept me propped up naturally, uh, more than, you know, if I didn't take it. So the issue, uh, started being that, you know, the lifestyle I was leading because, you know, I didn't have these problems. I didn't have any problems. So because I was taking African fly, I was doing things incorrectly. You know, the exercise would be, you know, good and sometimes bad. Um, you know, I go through, sp sp um, sections of, of life when it was like, I'm just going to eat whatever, not really paying attention and life catches up to you. Uh, as you get older, you know, it just became more apparent and I'm sitting there in shock like I'm the African fly guy. I know all this. Well, I was paying attention in my younger days just on the sexual techniques. Like, you know, if you're a, if you hang to the left and you you're hitting it from this angle, your erection will actually rub against the clitoris, all that type of stuff I knew about. <laughs> but in terms of health, I didn't. So I was doing things incorrectly uh, when it comes to health. So that's the reason why, you know, you doing the YouTube videos and the things that I always say, a supplement means it's supplementing the things that you're doing. So I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do. And I was taking the supplement and it was like, eh, me, you tried, we'll see. <laughs> and so I was sitting there, you know, at that seven, six, five range, um, and then realizing certain things like, hey, if you're going to uh, drink uh, that day or the day before, no. <laughs> if you're going to eat sugar, if you're going to uh, um, not sleep, all these different things started coming to effect. So it changed the way that I started taking African fly. I mean, well, actually, I, I started taking a little bit more of it. But the more that I started making changes, such as uh, three years ago, I went from eating 200 animals a month to now where I'm, I barely eat uh, animals at all. Um, uh, wasn't doing intermittent fasting at all. In fact, every morning I was getting up, eating three eggs with some bacon or something like that uh, and sleeping <laughs> for what? Um, and, you know, exercise and, you know, just dealing with not dealing with stress correctly, no meditation at all, just dealing with life and came down to that five. So, you know, that's my lesson to uh, everybody else out there. When it comes down to it, it's, it's, it's not taking one thing. Your body's way more complicated. And you know that. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know it. And so, you know, now I'm telling you, you, you yeah, <laughs> your body's way more complicated. You need to get um, that easiest system that I always talk about, the E-S-E-I-S, -E -S, energy, sleep, exercise, intermittent fasting, and taking care of your soul. You take care of those five areas. You add in African fly, other herbs, maca, uh, 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 ashwagandha, <sighs> You know, now I'm drinking teas. <laughs> There's so many things that you can do to help your body and you have to do those. Just relying on one product doesn't make sense because it's not the one product. It's the pattern that you're doing. You're on that downward cycle because the pattern that you're on is not helping. And believe me, 
the longer you stay on that downward cycle, the harder it is to get back up, especially the older you get. So uh, don't come down there because <laughs> it's hard getting back up, literally. So, all right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. You're welcome, Alan. You're welcome. Alan, uh-huh. You got a day? No problem, Fred. Uh-huh. Uh, is there any African fly being developed for people with kidney disease? Uh, no, no, we aren't on that level, Damien. Uh, and I want to leave that alone because uh, typically I, I'm talking to guys about uh, about their erection uh, issues. And, you know, if you have a medical thing, I want to be very specific. Uh, and I, I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on YouTube. So uh, I don't want to give you any. Uh... <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong advice. Dave, I wish it was hard getting back up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so many people do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, what's your views on plant protein powder supplements? Um, Mickey J. All right. So <laughs> people are looking at me funny. Uh, uh, plant protein. So plant po protein powder. Uh, here's the issue. You're made of water. <laughs> and so you're taking something that's dry and consuming. So it isn't uh, whenever you're you want the plant when they say whole plant, you want the plant to be in this most natural state. Uh, when you're taking the powder out, it's sort of like with oranges, how you take the, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, what is it, what's the, concentrate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all he did was just take the water out of it. Yeah. And so that causes, you know, we put water back in it, it's like, well, you destroyed part of the plant. There's some nutrients that gets taken out. Same thing applies to, uh, to the powders. So uh, I would rather you take a powdered protein, uh, protein, plant-based protein uh, than some of the other crap that's out there, but it's better eating the plant. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Sean, what teas do you drink? Ah, I, I'm into teas now. I, I try, uh, I just go to the tea aisle and start pulling. Uh, some specific ones uh, that I like, um, I got the maca. Actually, can you open that? Let me see what's in there. I got one for my, my uh, hand me the cans. Let me just go ahead and off the cans. Let me see it. No, no, down there. Yep, those three. Yep, right there. Yep. So uh, I'm not plugging these companies, but uh, let's see. Be well, teas. Get some Z's. Yep. And uh, we got dandelion, which is uh, it's a remedy. Uh, it, it dandelion helps with a lot of things. Oh yeah. And of course, I got my black seed oil. I'm just showing off the <laughs> the collection. Uh, I got my detox green. Okay. Uh, super green tea. So yeah, it's it's a bunch of them. Uh, even got the uh, even got white tea. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so uh, yep. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. But yeah. So you know, there's there's dozens of teas out there. And and once again, you know, it's to me the whole thing is getting to a point where our environment, my life, most people's lives. Uh, you're surrounded with chemicals and have been consuming things that you weren't meant to consume. So you're in the upward bout. Uh, you're going to try if you're trying to go up the upward, uh, going back up the upward cycle. Uh, you need as many things on your side as possible. So you know, if I'm drinking water, I like drinking water. It's like, well, go ahead and put in a tea in it. Uh, I do sun uh, sun teas. Basically, I have a clear. Can you give me the bottle? Uh, that that right there. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> Typically, I would take uh, tea bags, put them in here, get some water up to here, sit this sucker out in the sun and just let the sun brew it. And uh, yeah, why not? Tastes good. Um, and I don't add sugar to it just because uh, just because I, I'm not a, a great uh, great person on that. Ginger tea helps me with inflammation. Yep. Um, actually, I take the ginger can. Man, I'm showing off everything. The ginger is in the bowl. Uh, no, no, right there. That bowl under the, the lemons. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fine. Just, just the ginger. Just the ginger. Yep. 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 Boom. I take the actual raw ginger, uh, shave it, cut it up, and uh, pour it into hot tea. And uh, yeah, great for inflammation, great for digestion. It is actually one of the uh, ingredients in African fly. Mm hmm. All right. Thanks, Karan. Ah. Yep. Let's see. Uh, 
Will losing Steve, uh, Stevie, will losing weight and exercising more cure ED and make it me less reliant on supplements like uh, Cialis, Cetaphil, all that, all that stuff? Yes, the answer is yes. Losing weight uh, and exercising more will, and once again, uh, it won't cure ED uh, because the cure means that it won't come back. If you're making these changes, you're making a change. And also, I want to include with that, you had, you're saying losing weight, which means you're changing up how you eat, what you eat, make sure you're eating energy, uh, you're getting your exercise in, you want to do high intensity interval training, um, and you want to make sure you get your sleep in. That's just as important. And uh, yeah, those things, changing up that pattern. Uh, once again, uh, the pharmaceutical companies are just trying to make you believe that the only way that you can get better is by buying their product. They're not going to tell you to go to sleep. Or if they're going to tell you to eat something, it's going to be like, yeah, eat some more meat, uh, which they know is not great for you. Uh, so, yes, you can make those changes. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, that is like poison. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. All right, I think I saw that question before. I'm not sure if I can. Da -da -da -da. Uh, once again, fellas, thank you very much for being on. Just want to make sure I'm getting as many questions in uh, as possible. Uh, unfortunately, I'm missing one of my uh, great assistants today, so I'm I'm flying solo. We're well, not solo, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, Mr. McKenzie asks, is it? True that excessive masturbation and porn watching can cause porn-induced erectile dysfunction and can lead to going soft during sex. Okay, um, yes and no. Uh, excessive masturbation and porn watching is is problematic. Uh, the reason being that you're associating your dopamine with a screen and not a human person. And so when you get around a person after you've seen, um, you know, scenes with like three women and all types of weirdness going on, uh, and then you see your one. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, really? Really, I'd rather have the three. So, you know, you're psyching your brain out. Uh, so that's where the problem comes in. If you're having sex, then you don't have erectile dysfunction. Your, your penis works. Um, but it going soft during sex, that could easily, easily be a huge part of it. Uh, because once again, you're not, your brain isn't associating what it should be. Uh, the whole experience of having sex is the oneness. It's the only time that you and another human being can be as one. If your brain is bringing in like 14 other people, <laughs> uh, you know, then you're not connecting. And so if you're not connecting, you, your penis is like, oh, hold up. Well, when I'm looking at the screen and I'm managing myself as compared to someone else, then yeah, there's a huge difference. In fact, they've done studies where they show that, you know, you can last longer and have more ejaculations by looking at porn than you can with a real person. And it's because you're all in your head. It's you controlling you. You know when it's, oh, this is a great part. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. Whereas, you know, the other person is like, uh, I think this is a great part. He seems to be happy. I don't know. <laughs> so you have to be very careful with that. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're no longer able to uh, 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 function correctly with another human. That, that can be problematic, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, Mike. How do I improve my digestion issues and improve my hydration? Uh, by in improving your hydration, you will improve your digestion issues. Um, and so, you know, once again, you know, we talk about teas and stuff like that. You know, guys, get experimental. You know, a lot of times, yeah, water. <laughs> water is great, um, but, you know, sometimes you just like a little flavor and stuff. So the more, um, you know, the teas that you use, um, you know, it doesn't have to be hot you know when i sun brew my teas you know i just add ice to it you know so i have ice tea ice dandelion tea <laughs> um and so that adds some flavor to it you know uh whatever whatever you're drinking do not go overboard especially if you have digestive issues do not go overboard with sugar at all uh if you're going to use if you need a sweetener use stevia uh just a little pinch of stevia just to add a little flavor to it uh-huh yeah 
Prebiotics uh, do help um, kimchi, uh, sauerkraut, uh, see uh, ginger uh, helps with digestion. So there are a lot of things that help with digestion. And I would uh, I would almost guesstimate that part of your most people who have digestive issues in today's society tend to uh, eat a lot of meat. So if that's your situation, then you need to be very careful. Uh huh. Hmm. So that's a good question. Do you buffer yourself from a lot of electronics like laptops, tablets, phones, et cetera, so those EMFs don't hit you? <laughs> and I am surrounded by lights, television, and laptops, and a phone right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it is. Uh, fortunately, I'm grown, so it's not as problematic as it is with children. Um, but the thing that I do know that is to give yourself a break, do not sleep with your phone. In fact, take your phone and put it in another room if possible. Um, or just turn your phone off or put it on in airplane mode. You don't want to have while you're sleeping those signals. Also, do not sleep in, especially with your children. Do not put your children's near Wi-Fi equipment. Uh, Wi-Fi is getting stronger and stronger. You know, 5G, all this other kind of wonderful stuff that they have out now. Uh, it causes issues with the development of children's brains. Uh, so... Yeah, there's uh, one lady who was saying her child just kept having headache after headache after headache every night and then realized that the uh, Wi-Fi was on the other side of the wall of where she was sleeping, but her head was right there. So uh, you want to be very careful with that. All right. Uh, are there ways or things to practice to help finishing fast? Uh Oh, you're not talking about fasting. I was going to go in a different direction. I use, uh, to help finishing fat, I'm assuming you're meaning uh, uh, premature ejaculation. Uh, yes, there are things that you can do. I did a video uh, talking about premature ejaculation. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, so you can and you can also go through and look at that, uh, look at those videos. But uh, with premature ejaculation, the cool thing is that you're really into whoever uh, you're into. To the point that you do, woo, and you just can't control yourself. Uh, the bad problem is that you're so into this problem that you, woo, you can't control yourself. So, uh, you know, the thing that you could do, one of the things I say is to uh, uh, um, uh, foreplay is for men. So you want to get, and it seems counterintuitive, but, you know, the more foreplay you have, the more testosterone you build up, and the more testosterone you have, the more stamina you have, the longer you can last. Um, and, you know, talk about there are some techniques that people uh, tend to use, but, you know, hopefully for most guys, as you get older, that becomes less of an issue. Uh, but, yeah, you want to, uh, uh, you, the, yeah, check out the video because it's a, it, go, it, goes, it goes deep. <laughs> it goes deep. It's some things you can do. Okay. Uh, mm hmm. All right. Uh, Mike asks, what are the ingredients in African fly you speak of? African fly. Um, Main ingredients are yohimbe, cinnamon, sarsaparilla, uh, ginger, uh, uh, nutmeg, cloves. Yep, uh, those eight different herbs. Uh, and we, that particular proprietary formula uh, just works together well in terms of, uh, like ginger helps with the digestion, so it gets into your system very quickly. Um, and also uh, cloves helps with blood flow. Um, so, you know, it all works together to increase your testosterone, increase your blood flow. And, uh, yep, I've been selling it for the past 21 years, so something's working. <laughs> works for me. Works for me. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Right on, Mike. Cut sugar out to improve digestion and limit the amount of animal protein and use natural remedies for better digestion. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, Norval asks, do you have videos that give tips and techniques to make sure you are doing everything you can to get the right amount of blood flow to make sure you maintain strong erections? Just did that video. <laughs> that was last week. <laughs> that was last week. So uh, check out the last video. Um, we Once again, we broke it down live last Thursday. So, yep. Go ahead and check that out. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, Corey, is a plant-based protein shake bad as well? How does it taste, Corey? Does it taste like a plant? Or does it taste like a birthday cake? <laughs> if it tastes like a birthday cake, bad for you. If it tastes like a plant, there you go. <laughs> mm. 
Mm -hmm. Hey, you're welcome, Norval. You are welcome. Uh huh. I have got to do research on that QM. Um, is there anything natural you can do to reverse retrograde ejaculation? Unfortunately, I do not know that answer, but that has been brought up to me before. And uh, I want to know. I want to know so I can answer you and I'll have know that information myself. Okay. All right, guys, uh, we are coming up on an hour. Hey, I appreciate everyone being on here. Once again, uh, if you want to check out African Fly, you can use the code AF15, African Fly 15, to take 15% off of African Fly. Um, uh huh. And <laughs> Alvaro, that's another question. Can hemorrhoids affect your erections? Um, I would say yes. I don't have the research on that. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to any part of your body, once again, uh, the veins in your penis are the smallest and, you know, it's the most sensitive and you're a life giver. And if you're in a situation where your body isn't doing well, that means you don't give the, the optimum life possible. So it, whatever part of your body is not doing well, it's going to affect your erections uh, first. They call your uh, erections the canary in the coal mine. If your erections aren't working correctly, something else is uh, going wrong. Mm -hmm. Can types of clothing play a part in ED? Yeah, get out of them tidy whities. Mm -mm, I don't care if it's Superman on them or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. You do. You're supposed to hang. I mean, think about this. We uh, clothing is something that. Um, uh, um, and let me not say newer, but it's we were hanging. <laughs> we should be hanging looser <laughs> than uh, restrictive clothes are allowing you to. So you don't want to cut the blood flow down there for anything <laughs> at all, at all. So, yeah, there it goes. Hey, fellas. Ah. Thanks again. Um, appreciate you. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel so we can get some more of this information to you. Uh, check me out at African Fly with some videos. We got the blog over there. Uh, Jay, does oil increase ED? I'm not sure what oil you you mean. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, boxers. Yeah, you want boxers, not briefs. Uh-huh. Yep. There you go. Hey guys, I appreciate you. Uh Corey and Damien. I hope I got everybody uh all your questions answered. This is what we do every Thursday. If it didn't get you this time, we're gonna get you next time. That's what we do. So hey, nephews, uncles, fathers, brothers, appreciate every one of you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Until then, uh, stay blessed, stay fresh. This is Uncle B saying, get your game up and go hard. Peace out.